Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see everybody here uh, today again. Um, we are in section two, and we have just completed diagonal flying last week. And this week, we're going to go over, so we're going to review diagonal flying because it's a big move in more ways than one. And look at some skills. And we're also going to look at some variations of movements. We'll see how far we get that are repeated in section two that we have done in section one. So that's the agenda for today. So I'm looking forward to that with you. I thought we would see what we could do going through what we know again to date. This may be the last time we do all that section one, so enjoy it. <laughs> and I thought I would remind you of where your gaze is gonna be. So uh, let's do that again. Starting our warm up with section one in prepare, really centered. Feel the weight on every part of your foot. Feel the top of your head stretching up very gently, just sort of gently lifting up and your shoulders and your body just sort of hanging from this very long neck. And then make sure your knees are still soft. You're still grounded in your feet and you could just get ready to sit in that chair. This is prepare. We are looking forward and opening. Left word off, our gaze is gonna follow these body movements. And now it's gonna go back to 12 o'clock and then travel with our body turn over to three. And over to 4.30, if we're following the left hand now, as we do right word off. Roll back, follow that right arm with your gaze. As it swings left, you're following it. And now back to center at three o'clock. Push, just stay at three o'clock. Single whip. We're going to follow the turn in this arm, the left arm. And now the right arm direction. Make that hook. You're following the right arm. And now the left arm. This is going to take you to nine o'clock. Raise hands and step forward. Follow that left hand as we turn and now looking to 12 o'clock, execute the technique. Uh, ah, white crane. <laughs> I was thinking of trying to find the name. White crane spreads its wings. We look just a little bit to the left as we do that and then gaze over that right shoulder and are looking at nine o'clock. Left brush knee and push. We're gonna follow that right arm. And now the left arm. Hand strimes the lute. Looking at nine o'clock. We stay looking at nine o'clock. Left brush knee, remember, follow that right arm, looking at that back corner, and now looking at nine o'clock. And the next brush knee, same kind of deal. We're gonna follow that left hand and the body turning, and then the right. And then another final brush knee.
Hand strums the lute. Gaze doesn't change. And left brush knee. Step up, parry, block, and punch. Gaze is going to follow that left arm and then work its way back to nine o'clock. Stay there. A parent closing up. You are just going to stay looking at nine o'clock. You're doing a lot of stuff with both arms here. Cross hands, follow the right arm direction. And that's not specifically following the arm, remember. And we are looking at 12 o'clock. It's looking beyond our arms just over our arms. And embrace tiger, return to mountain. As our body turns, our gaze goes with it. And follow that left arm like you would in a brush knee and then the right arm. Roll back, keep looking in the direction of your front foot. I'm sorry, you did not keep looking in the direction of your front foot. You follow your right arm. <laughs> and come in for press. Now you're looking in the direction of your front foot. And keep looking in the direction your front toes are pointing, right? Fist under elbow. You're gonna follow that left arm like you would in single whip and then follow the right arm so you end up looking at three o'clock. Now follow the left arm and look over your middle forearm towards the corner and where you're grabbing. Then here you go. You're looking at nine o'clock. Repulse monkey, stay looking at nine o'clock. Both arms are working for you here. You're just going to pay attention to your opponent. That was one. Here comes number two. And number three. Diagonal flying. Our gaze is going to follow that left arm as it comes over, and then the right arm. All right. How is that? For those of you that this is new, all, all these moves, I know this is difficult to add one more thing. <laughs> but it's kind of nice to know where you're, and you're, you're at the point now where you wanna be training yourself to look in the correct direction, to have where your eyes are be part of the movement that you're doing. Hey, Shelly, did you have a comment or a question? No? Okay, good, good. So, <laughs> all right. Um, any any questions about any of those movements that you, you have at this point? We're gonna review last week's movement. Is there anything in particular about last week's movement that is needing practice or explanation? I can't get my feet in the right place. <laughs> that... <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Shelly's sitting here going, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I remember that. All right. Well, we will definitely work on the footwork. Sounds good, Dorothy. Uh, yeah, it's, it sounds really good. Getting your feet in the right place is very complicated because it's not just a backward step. It's a backward step 
into a corner position and it's just about impossible to do. So uh, why don't we go through that again? Um, and I'm thinking it's probably best to just do it from this way to start because you'll be looking over your right shoulder and you'll be turning that way. So first of all, one thing you wanna be really clear about is your weight is gonna be for a long time, 100% on your left leg. Another thing that is really important is that you keep a very loose um, uh, claw here, a very loose crotch here, so that your knee stays pointed in the direction of your toe of your left foot. If that knee starts to come in, you could, you're not only going to torque that foot, but you're not going to be aligned in the right direction to do this. Okay? So keep your weight on the left leg. It's all right in this too. If you look down and you end up seeing that your toes are a little in front of your foot, if that happens, that's okay as long as it's in the right direction. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have been in this uh, empty stance, heel touch in the direction of nine o'clock. So we've got 70% of our weight on the left foot and 30 on the right. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the weight off of that foot and bring this foot, the right foot in and let it go sort of straight back. But we're gonna reach back with the heel, not the toe. Now look at my body. Look at how my body is angled and see how my, if you may not be able to see it. I can put my foot down a little bit in this direction so it's just not requiring quite as much strength as I talk. Um, you really, really want this knee to be over your toe or even over your toe in that direction as you begin to move. Because a lot of what you end up doing is reaching back behind you with that, that foot. What a lot of people do is they're also turning, turning, turning. And they get it pointed generally in this direction. So if you see in that particular demonstration, I didn't get quite there. It's very hard to do when you stop. So we're gonna do it a little, a little faster. From here, we're gonna step back with our heel. When we do, keep this knee here. You could even reach down and touch it if you want. And then come over, swing over. You're actually not going to swing. Now, turning your upper body is going to make this a lot easier and not stopping. So what you want to do is push with that heel, stand on that left leg, come back, reach with your heel, turn, 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 turn your upper body. When you do that, it's easier to get this foot aligned to the um, diagonal direction. You notice that you also pivot on this left foot. So what is the left foot doing? It's taking all the weight. You're keeping very open on that left side, keeping that knee there, keeping your weight there, but then turning. It's very hard to stop here. See how my chest is in, this, is in this direction now, okay? So by the time your foot comes behind you, your heel really touches the ground behind you, your weight is still forward, but you have started, you're turning already. And then as you transfer your weight, you can pivot on your left heel so that you end up in a bow step to the corner. So your right foot should be towards 1.30, if this is 12 o'clock, this is three o'clock, 1.30. 
if this is south, and this is this is what uh, west, and this is southwest, right? It's that kind of thing, 45 degrees. Our new position, where the front foot is here, our back foot is going towards 12 o'clock. If I pivot it to make it on railroad tracks in this direction and step up, ideally, I'm shoulder width apart. As we discussed last week, it is okay if you can't make it. If you end up, you know, just, just a little bit this way, that's all right. Just make yourself sort of a, a, a bow step. Don't if you're if you're not quite to the degree here, then you're not going to quite get to to um, to to straight with your other foot. Um, Dorothy, is that helping? Yes, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Do you need to see it from another direction? Um, I don't, I, I'll just need to practice it, but, um, right. Okay. It's good. Thank you. Okay. Berlin, do you have a, a thought or are you just coming close to look? No, I, I do have a thought because I ran back and forth through this motion a lot of times this week. <laughs> and what I, and my bow step was constantly too narrow on the tracks. And so then I finally figured out what you just said is that you're you're not stepping into a plie like where your hips are aligned. You're stepping back. So I ended up just reverse engineering it. I, I got in my bow step that I wanted to end at and I thought, okay, this is where I want to end. So then I turned my foot this way and I thought, okay, that's where my foot needs to go when I step back. And I yes. figure out where does the foot go to get the bow step at the end by doing it back. And that's a very good tip for people. And many people find, depending on how tall you are, it, it will it will work a little different. But most people have to not think of stepping to the corner. They need to think of coming to center and then reaching back behind them. And where they end up reaching, like for me, you can actually probably see here, I'm just barely touching this line with this foot. And my other foot, you know, is is just a little to the right of, of that line. So, you know, it's two or three inches sort of in the 12 o'clock direction is, is where he ends up. And of course, if I do it dynamically, if, if you know, if, if I do it, if I do it dynamically, then it, it always gives a better one. And they're actually, it's almost back. For me, it's almost straight back. But so, and the longer you can step back, and that comes with time, the longer you can step back, you kind of have to make a long step back in order to make a reasonable bow step. Uh, if you make a short one, which of course makes it easier for you, uh, it makes it harder to come in where you want to be. So that's another tip. Uh, Shelly, any, any thoughts? So here's the deal. I actually was born with, and so my dorsiflexion and lateral is, I, I can rarely do it correctly without taking an extra step. Got it. Got it. So that's all, that's all right too, to take an extra step. If, if you need an extra step, you can, you can take an extra step. So taking an extra step, I'm not quite sure how you do it, but you know, you can put this foot wherever you can, and then you can start to shift and you can then move this foot and into position and, and take your take your step. So there there are a lot of us who make uh, who make what would we say? Accommodations. I made an accommodation for years, years and years and years and years, even when I went up for ranking. And I just said, I, you know, I have to make an accommodation. It was on single whip. There's like nine of them <laughs> in the form. And, well, I, and I, I couldn't, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say two things. One is I really like to, I, I, it's more comfortable to feel balanced through the whole process than try to get it exactly right. Yes. 
And I also do accommodation because of that whole dorsiflexion thing on single limb a little bit. But the way I do it, I don't think oftentimes people don't notice. So I, I cheat. Yeah, I, I, I would pivot on both balls of my yeah. feet at the same time. Yeah. And that's what actually Master Yang re re recommends. Once I fixed my knees, I was able to do it again. Uh, AJ, welcome. It's nice to see you. So any other questions about this movement? We've, uh, I, I have one other thing to talk to you about if, if we don't have uh, any other comments about it. I wanna talk about the circling of the arms. Now, last time, so, so we're starting like this and I'm just gonna show you from the front. This is the right hand. I'm gonna show you from the front. Last time I kind of said, Oh, you know, you come out and you come together and we, we like practice coming over a ball, right? Right? I want to just for those of you who are interested, I want to get this a little more advanced. When we do, um, this is all going to make sense in a minute. When we do brush knee, okay, you know how I've gone like this and said, oh, come on, everybody, put your elbows where they belong. And then just, you know, let it, let them drop, right? And then let them spin and then unspin. It's so easy to do for most of us, unless you have real joint problems. It's so easy to do. When it becomes hard, <laughs> so when I'm doing brush knee or, or, um, or uh, repulse monkey, this, this is the move. Now I want you to look at this more carefully today. This is the this is the move. Watch my elbow. Do you see what's happening to my forearm and my elbow? It's you know, you can kind of cheat and do it other ways, right? You can kind of move your arm and then flex and it'll look very similar. But what you really wanna do is keep this. Do you see what my elbow is doing? Look at that. And that is what your elbow does when we just do this thing, right? And we go, <laughs> we don't think about it. That it, now, now do it around, around your elbow joint. See, around your elbow joint. You see, if I slow it down, you see what's happening? Now, the reason why you want to learn to do this and not just sort of mm, not, you know, why you want to do this is because if you ever did the martial arts associated with this, there would be times when you were stuck and you want to slither out. You want to just slither out, right? If you have always practiced these things using this thing that we can all do, but we don't. I've just shown you guys, you know how to do it. Right? You can do it. But we tend to do it the easy way. We tend to go, oh, I'm just going to be over this ball. And we don't really move anything. What we really want is to keep it. Do you see that? Do you see that elbow? Like go into a mirror and, 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 and watch what happens when you do that dropping thing. And what you want is, is that move. So. In this, every time we went back, every time we went out, we were actually doing that. You see that, how that looks a little different? That. And it's true here. It's very subtle here. It's, it's we're actually gonna be turning cause you know, we're stepping back and doing all that, but This is how we close our arms there. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you it is something that if you want to take on, and I know we have some 
advanced students here, um, either in the martial arts or because they've studied it before, that it is something worth working on to be able to, to get your mobility in your elbow joints. Yes. The, the, the other piece of it, though, is that particularly when you're holding the ball and doing some things is that you want your hand under your elbow, kind of. Yes, this is true, too. This is true, too. So it's but you see that elbow go. Look at my left arm in particular, because it's easier to see when it's not got anything on it. OK, so that it kind of looks like this. And this is what happens when we get to cloud hands in a little while. We'll be going like this, and we'll be pulling down. And then we'll do that thing where we have to relax here and let it turn, you know? And it's tricky when you start. So you can you can you can work on it or not. At one day it'll come. It's kind of like everything else. One day it'll come. But if you ever ever have intention to be a martial artist, it is something you 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 really need, because there will be a time when it will look like you are locked up and dead in the water, and you'll go with where they want you to go, and the next thing you're out, because you were able to slither out. <laughs> so something to keep, some, something to, uh, to just put in the back of your brain if you want to do it. So it's something to work on. Um, so when you do it. Yeah, Erlen. Yeah, I, I think I'm doing that, but I'm not sure. But um, okay. that, the last position when you're closed, is that the same closed as it is with white crane right before you? Or it's the same. Well, every one is a little different. Okay. Uh, I mean, some some are some are like at the start. At the start, you know, we do this and we do this. Look at how far out they are, right? Sometimes they're in closer. I still have a good body shape. Sometimes this arm is out a little further. It all depends on what it is you're doing. When we start with uh, left word off, you know, we're grabbing somebody and then we're gonna do this big body turn. So we wanna be where that person is. But other times like in this move, diagonal flying, we're becoming like a spring. We're we're, you know, we're, we're close. I mean, we, we have our body shape, but as Shelly points out, we're, we're like this because, but we're not just like this. Yeah, we're not just like this. We're like this, you know, we're like a spring. We've, we've closed as far as we can close over here so that we can open with a lot of force. We haven't just closed our arms. We've closed our body, right? We've closed, we've turned in, and then we've, we've come out. All the power is coming. The further I can make that turn, I mean, we don't want to overturn ourselves and hurt our bodies, but we are, tend to be closed. And that position, when when we when we end up here, you know, we are. I'm sorry, maybe like this. When when we end up here, we because we're actually here, we're able to be this turned because our foot is here. It, it makes it easier to be this turn. And then as we do it, it's a huge, powerful turn. So, 
Okay, thanks. That that helps. Yeah, it's it has to do with the way the energy is going too. So, yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Absolutely. So, so it's there. Uh, let's just do a little more practice of this so that we can now put put this in. I'm going to do it from this direction. So we've just finished our last repulse monkey. You have good body shape here. Good body shape. Remember, you're going to try to rotate this arm up, this, this elbow, that left hand elbow. And we're going to just, just do whatever you can do. We're going to shift our weight onto that back foot. Our arms are circling. We're turning. We're reaching back. And throw that Frisbee. Nice, nice. One more time. And shift that weight all the way onto that left foot. Keep it there as you go back and throw that Frisbee. The power comes from the turn and the shift of weight. Feel those as where your power comes from. And the only reason, the only, and the release of your spring. There is no separate movement with your arms. I mean, there, it's, it's all with your, with your, 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 torso opening, your upper body opening. Here we go again. And you're becoming like a spring. You're a spring. The spring releases. Your Tai Chi will be very smooth and beautiful if you, if you feel the body closing and the body opening. It doesn't matter how. So, so you're, you're kind of tempted to do this, to fling the fl Frisbee, right? No, 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 no. I mean, that's what we say, right, originally. But a person who's really good at flinging the Frisbee will fling it with their whole body turn. Their whole body turn. So keep that, keep that in mind as you do it. All right. Would you like to go on? Okay. All right. So the next movement is a repeat movement and it is uh, raise hands and step forward. So before I show it, let us just review a little bit about raise hands and uh, step forward. So in, um, after we've done single whip, just follow me. And remember this, remember raise hands. So this hand is at your, your hook is hitting into somebody's neck about your neck height. It's a little higher than, than your left hand, which is more like your shoulder height. And we shift our weight towards the right and get it on the heel of our left foot. So we can pivot to the diagonal. Then we shift all of our weight and we release the hook. And then we bring our foot in, put our heel down and 30%. One line, two sides. What are the arms doing? Uh, let's see. We shift to the right, we turn to the right. We release the hook as we shift left and our arms start to circle back. They follow, they follow the energy, which is back into the side. And so does your foot. It then puts your heel down when you're almost in this push position and then you execute. Everybody remember how that worked? We were swimming, right? We were swimming, swimming. Somebody, you pull back and you go forward, pull back and go forward, pull back and go forward. 
or I said, raise hands, raise your hands. You know, it's like, like somebody's holding you up in an old cowboy Western in the US, right? Okay. So what's, um, if we did it, if we did it this way, if we did it this way, right? Then here's that swimming beginning. And then we turn our upper body to the left just at the moment we start to put the 30%. And when we do, that helps to throw that right arm forward. Nice, nicer, Lynn. So we're, in, we've been swimming, we've been swimming, but then we turn to the left and it goes forward. And how does how do our hands end up? The palm of our left hand, not the fingertips, the palm of our left hand is facing the middle forearm. What are we doing? We're, gra we're getting, bringing somebody's arm in with your left hand and contacting that elbow probably right here. It's a split energy, right? <laughs> and that could be the, uh, the end, uh, the, uh, the outcome, right, of, of, of that. So it's a very forceful move. So how is that implemented? Everybody remembers that, right? How is that implemented here? Well, we're in a very different position. So here we are, I'll turn around in a minute, but I just want you to see it from where we actually were. We're actually gonna move forward twice in this move and once back. So we're gonna move forward onto that right foot completely. And you're gonna feel like you're going further towards the corner. Let your arm go towards the corner, your right arm. Bring your other foot back as if it was one line, two sides to the 12 o'clock direction, because that's where we're going to be turning now. So what's going to happen? You're going to go back on to that left foot. As you do, your arm, your elbows stay down and your arms do that circle hands up thing. And see my right foot, there is my toe, right? I mean, I've, I've come back off that foot off the ball. I'm almost off it now. And my foot comes in and to neutral and out very quickly. And then as soon as it roots, I turn to the left and Give a strong 30% on that heel touch, just like you do in the other one. So let's, uh, let's try it from this direction. So just to make it easy, you're gonna put your left foot towards nine o'clock and your right foot towards the diagonal in a bow step to the corner. And here you are. Move your weight completely onto the right foot. Toes the last to leave and the first to come down. You're coming in to one line, two sides. Then come back. Arms fly up, put your heel down, 30% and turn. I'm gonna show you from here so you can see it from the front. Shifting the weight forward, stepping back,
So it's just a little different. Questions? Can you do it one more time facing forward like you just did? Absolutely. All right, so. So here we are. Ideally, this is the position we would be in, right? And our chest is not here. And it's not all the way here. It's in between. Okay. And onto the right foot. Bring the left foot back. Back. Heel. Turn. From here, it's hard to see the relationship of the hands, but you know that. And as ever, <laughs> they're on either side of my nose. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show it to you one more time from this direction. A little closer here. Because now you can see the hands better. Got it? Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, well, let's let's practice it from the correct direction. Uh, I have one question. Oh, yes, AJ. Uh, we are drumming left hand, hitting with this part or this part? This part. This part. Okay. This part. You could, obviously you could, and I'm, I'm sending links to other videos. I don't know whether you can get them there, but, um, but uh, Master Young makes a good point. I think he would be very interested in. Oh, could you mute yourself for a moment? Cause I hear background noise. He makes an interesting point. First of all, he says it's here. He says you need two points. So, so if, if you're here, that's one. Two, right? Right. But if your opponent grabs you on the shoulder, you've got two points because your opponent is already connected. So the reason so there is a little sitting of this hand which you're picking up, but I am not hitting here. I'm hitting here here. Now, if you can't, you can't, because if you're an actual doing something, you might not be able to. But it's, a, it's an interesting video because he makes that he makes that point. He says, he says, if they if they if you if they grab you here, you know, maybe you can do less. It's smaller or, you know, if but if they grab you here or here and, and they're connected to you, you have an opportunity. You don't need your other hand. I thought I found that really interesting. So I thought you would too. Good question. Um, all right, let's uh, let's do it again. From here, I think you'll be able to see more. And onto that right foot, bring the left foot back. And all your weight back, hands fly up, heel touch, turn 30%. Now, what can go wrong? Look down and make sure your knee is in the direction of your toes. Has it wandered in towards your other leg? You don't want it wandering in. That's dangerous for you, okay? You still want your tail, your you still want your spine, the bottom of your spine, to be on this center line. So don't let the bottom of your spine drift and stick your butt out or anything. You want to have, you want to have your, you know, that relaxation in the back, in your back, so that you can keep everything centered. You will know you've got it right when you can't, like I was just showing you, I had to stop because if you stay in that position, 
for a while, it's, it's, it is really, if you're in the right position, you will know it if you hold it for 30 seconds because it will start telling you, you're, you're really working here. <laughs> it feels like you've done, you know, 50 or 100 knee bends or something. So just keep that in mind. Any questions on this? All right, we're gonna practice the two moves together. I think that will be helpful. And we're gonna do it from here. All right, so it's the end of, it's our third, the pulse monkey. Diagonal flying. Raise hands and step forward. And again, diagonal flying, circling our arms, coming to neutral, stepping back, turning and opening, raise hands and step forward, shift weight, that hand seems to be going further to the corner, bring that left foot in and back, moving our weight back, heel touch, 30%, one more time, Diagonal flying. Raise hands and step forward. White crane spreads its wings, pulling down, circling our arms, stepping, that hidden shoulder strike. Left brush knee and push. Let's do the same thing again, focusing on gaze. Oh, questions, actually. All right. Not, not hearing any, you have them shout out. From here, where is our gaze? It's gonna follow that turn. Diagonal flying, follow the left hand and the right. Follow the right hand and back to 12 o'clock. White crane spreads its wings. Gaze just goes a little bit to the left and then over your shoulder, quick kind of glance back. And then it moves to nine o'clock. Left brush knee following the right hand. And then the left. All right, we are going to do it again. Oh wait, questions. All right, we are going to do it again, but we're gonna do it from, um, from after fist under elbow. So here we are, fist under elbow. Is that right? Hmm. You know what, I think we should do, just wanna make sure. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's, I think it's this way. Yeah, I think it's this way. Fist under elbow. And repulse monkey. One. Two.
three. Remember, this is all about the pull, not about the strike. The pull is powered by your movement. And here's another powered by your movement, diagonal flying. Raise hands and step forward. White crane spreads its wings. Left brush knee and push. Looking good. Shall we do it from the start of section two? All right. From cross hands. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Circling our arms, stepping out, polish the table, strike. Roll back, that right hand comes up near your shoulder and then out, you go back and then you turn. And press, push. Fist. Under elbow. Pushing out. Warding off to the corner. Grabbing, stepping. Big turn and punch. Repulse monkey, one. Pull. Two, pull, three. That pull is entirely a matter of holding on while your body comes back and turns. Diagonal flying, turn, 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 and throw that Frisbee. Shift your weight. Step back, all your weight back, hands fly up, heel touch, turn your upper body. White crane spreads its wings, pulling down all your weight as you circle your arms and step, glance over your shoulder. Left brush knee and push. All right. How's it feeling, Erlen? This is completely new to you. It, it's feeling pretty good, but now I'm back questioning my my white crane and other things that I wasn't questioning before. So now I'm re-questioning, but that's fine because that's how it goes. So that's okay. You know what? We always have time at the beginning of every class in or to to review. So if you have questions, especially, you know, like next week, part of what we can review is, is, is those moves, right? Uh, because we did a lot this, this time, but, you know, we can do, review anything we did this time and really anything we've done. Because when you did first section, this is how I feel about it. When you did first section, there was no way I could tell you everything because you didn't know how to do a hand shape. <laughs> you didn't know what body shape was. You had no idea about torso turning and connecting it. I mean, there's just so much you've learned. It's phenomenal. And now when we're in second section, there's an opportunity, especially with those early moves in first section, to tell you there's a little more meat in them. 
like that swing that's a slither thing <laughs> that's a that's a you know i mean you could do it you could do it here you could do it here you could do it there you could do it you know i mean it's like yeah it's it's but but we're you only do it where you need to right so so what you see some people do in their style of Tai Chi is they'll do this and then they'll do some extra little flourish or something. I guess it's because there's a possibility. We, we don't do that. We, you're just going to see it does sit. The hand sits. But it's a natural thing. So uh, in our style, different, different styles, different things. All right, any, any final thoughts? All right, I think we're done. Good work today. A really interesting, work on your empty steps because it's another empty step next week and it's, it's complicated. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be, right? All right.